Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John, and this week we're discussing the death of death. The death of yes. death. Yes. Um, actually, what we're talking about is immortality. Um, and if people were to become immortal, what impacts that would have on several different aspects of human interaction in society. Um, but really just what would change if we were immortal? You know, I have, I have this urge that we should have opened the show up with who wants to live forever by queen, you know, instead of, uh, instead oh, of that our, our been tradition. Good. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I and, wanted to open it up with an endorsement for uh, Zoltan Isvan, the first transhumanist candidate who <laughs> crazily <laughs> thinks that uh, anybody under the age of 50 right now is going to... Uh, has a real chance at living forever. Man, I just made the cut. Nice. Yes. Yeah. You're in, Mike. You're in. <laughs> yeah. So, all you fifty plusers. <laughs> yeah, <I agree. laughs> yeah, you guys are great. Sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> but all right. So, what, what are, we, are we drinking, guys? We are drinking extra special red Imperial Red Ale, and I'm gonna say aged in whiskey barrels. From the Cellar Series, and this is Odell Brewing Company in Fort Collins, Colorado. The ABV is what? 8.7. I have to ask that because I can't read these little yes. bitty uh, things on here. So high, but not too high. We've we've had much higher. I'm pretty excited about this. This bottle looks awesome. It does. Well, and we generally like Odell beers on this show. I'm just going to hold this out here and whoever grabs it first. <laughs> I win. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Yeah. Um, so take us into the show while I uh, open this up and, and taste this. So what I want to do on this show is really just kind of... Is there a problem, John? Yeah. Producer man. Producer as soon as, man. As soon as you get your beer open, can you go grab our glasses? We are unprepared yeah. today. No, 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 no. Producer man. That doesn't yes. fit. He needs a cape, doesn't he? Yes, he, he does. does need a cape. He does. And a mask. Yes. He is our hero. I've got a Guy Fox mask in the car if you need it. No, thank you. So anyway, um, my goal with this, um, I know there are some philosophers who have explored this a bit, but I really kind of wanted to use this episode to ask some basic questions and and have some, uh, some of our own discussion on it, because um, I feel like in a lot of our episodes, we kind of really focus on what other people have said about it and not developing our own ideas. Wait, hold up. Are you saying in this episode we're going to do philosophy instead of studying philosophy? That's right. We're actually going to be philosophers. That's not what this show is about. I don't know (laughs) what show you guys are watching. Do you remember when that that was what this show was about? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Good old days. Good old days. Shit. Finish Every, your beers. Every, Everything yeah. is breaking yeah. today. What a show. What a Shit. show. Oh, smart. Oh. Good. Kind of. Yeah, right right there. There we go. So this is how oh. this show is going to go today. Glorious, if, glorious. If you are watching on YouTube. Anna, lick the table clean. No. <laughs> <laughs> we have spilled I'm, beer in a very serious way, but we're going to push forward. So. Ah, uh, glory. Fuck. The glories of, of, a, Thank live, you. Thank you. Thank of you. a live broadcast here. Um, so anyway, I'll clean this up. You you keep talking to us. Okay. Well, let me get my phone so I can actually see this stuff. Um, anyway, here. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Um, so where I actually wanted to jump in is first with the idea of morality, um, because that is actually the realm in which I I first started considering the idea of how immortality would impact um, how oh, more. Wow. T- Immortality would impact morality. That's going to be a tongue twister through this whole show. Yeah, you know something I, I, I've noticed about this beer already. I know I'm jumping subjects here, but uh, and here I'll, I'll give you the rest since you. Oh, thank have, you. I've lost some of yours. Um, but something I've noticed about this beer, you can really tell that the whiskey is soaked in because it doesn't fizz the way that that uh, a, a lot of beers. You can have a towel out of the bathroom. Um, so it, it it has a beautiful color, and this is one that you could pour a little bit harder when you go to pour it because. Oh, it's, mm. Anyway, sorry, I derailed our our conversation on the actual show. That's okay. Uh, when we the, are off to a great start, yes, we are. When the beer spilled on my phone, it apparently started editing the document. So hopefully that doesn't screw us up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. This is a good day. Okay. Anyway, thank you. Um, so I, I considered a couple of things. First of all, um, there's, there's long been this idea of like morality changes 
because generations roll over. Yeah. Um, we have this idea of like, um, well, you know, I'm, I'm, that's the way that I grew up. I shouldn't have to change. Yeah. We, we've also heard a bunch of young people, and I think this is probably not unique to our generation. Right. Where, where some, th- there will be a big debate on an issue between the generations, and the younger generation will use the trope, well, it doesn't matter. You're going to die. So you've already lost. You know, yeah. You're going to die too. So, uh, yeah. you know, eventually but, you're going to lose too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. You, yeah. you get to use it's that for a while. And, <laughs> it is. You know. I'm so, under 50, though, so I'm not going to die. Yes, so you're it's, good. it's going to work out. We're, we're, right. yeah. we're going to win. We're yeah. going to win, yeah. So with that, I wanted to consider, um, I think there are two different ways that immortality can go with regard to uh, changes in what we consider to be moral. Now, um, I want to qualify this with the idea that morals have changed over time. Now, we're going to have to accept... Um, What is the term? uh, Moral relativism here? Yeah. Yeah. Um, So we're going to have to operate from a place of moral relativism first. So so you're advocating that we accept reality at this at this point. I don't know if this this show is about, but we can try. I wasn't going to say that. (laughs) And then we get to have uh, the discussion on whether or not reality is real. Yeah. Um, but we have to start from a place of accepting moral relativism. (laughs) Um, If we just look at things like you know. I'll use the common one. Slavery used to be considered to be morally acceptable, and now it's not. Um, And there are numerous things with which that has happened. Um, And so the question that I pose to you guys is, if humans are immoral, do we... Immoral or immortal? Sorry, thank you. I told you that was going to be a tongue twister this whole show. If humans are immortal... Do we see a stagnation in the evolution of morality, or do we see a more fluid openness to reconsidering our morality? If if humans are immortal, now that all humans, mm-hmm. and and I guess that there's another qualifier here is: Are we talking in the case where they won't die of natural causes, or they won't <coughs> die? Like you'd be beheaded, and you're you know you're just maybe we should consider both of those. Okay. Because uh, I, I think there can be vastly different answers there. I don't know that the, the case where humans uh, don't die of natural causes changes much. It may mm-hmm. stretch things on a time scale, but eventually, statistically, you're going to eventually run into that situation that kills you, right? Statistically, yeah. you're going to get hit by a bus at some point. Yeah. 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 Live long enough, you'll or get hit by yourself. a bus. yourself. You know, yeah, whatever. And that's actually something else to consider there. Yeah. So uh, I don't think it changes much in that aspect. Mm-hmm. Now, as far as the other... It would slow things down. It slow things down, yeah. yeah. But 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 it, it would only seem relevant to us in our very limited time scale. If you look at at, at a universal time scale, it, it would really be inconsequential, I, I think. Um, You'd also have the situation where if if you reach that situation where where you know you're going to live forever, uh, you'd almost have to sterilize the population. Yeah. Or expand other territories. Yeah. 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 But um, but. In the other case, I, I think it, it does have a serious impact on that because if you know you'll live forever, uh, the the whole possible space of, of possibilities that society can interact with, you know you will live through one of those, I think it almost defeats the purpose of change society. The reason we change society is to make our lives better. Mm-hmm. And the reason for those for doing that, and, and even the whole foundation of rights, has to do with the fact that you're a living being, you know you can die, and because of your limited time span here, you, you have a quality that is guaranteed of that. And with that removed, I, I wonder if we even have a reason to progress. Well, I, 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 think, I think morality does change, if for no other reason than, you know, if I expect to live for a thousand years, uh, committing a crime and getting 20 years in prison might not be that bad. Of a, but, right. you know, it might be something that I'm willing to do. On the other hand, life in prison may be a whole life detrimental thing. Life in prison could be thing. something totally yeah. different. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, that would be. Yeah. Well, and we're actually going to do some ex- exploration on crime and punishment here yeah. here in a little bit. That's that's uh, that's terrifying. Yeah. Um, Just so, shoot me. So you can't. You're, you're mortal. Do something. <laughs> yeah. I, I would actually wonder if we would not end up with a more fluid morality. Um, I, I don't think that it would stagnate. It's gotten because, pretty fluid now. 
because I, I'm not talking some of the, the changes we've seen more recently, but um, I think that with our concept of, of this short life that we live, um, we're viewing it in a very isolated context. And I think if you have the expectation of living forever, you become more accepting of the idea that you could be wrong. Um, I, I think you would naturally have to. You're wrong enough times that it's just kind of, yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I'm a dumbass and a shitty person. You just like yeah. come to well, that you, you know, if you, you live through the time when we at one point legitimately thought that the earth earth was the center of the universe and then you now um, we now we know i am yeah, yeah. Uh, well or, and then we get to the point where we think the sun is the center of the universe and and, and then we eventually come to the point where mike is the center of that's the universe right, that's and, right or you live in that time when we used to think the earth was flat that was 2017 i oh. i have i have never loved you more than i do, do right now <laughs> i'm just just pointing that out yeah yeah, yeah, yeah where, the, where the earth is flat yeah uh, good god <laughs> Yeah. Please don't let those people live forever. Yeah, right. <laughs> Please don't. I'm all for immortality as long as there's a test or something. There, yeah, you know? yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, you get to. No, you don't. Yeah. So, you get to administer the test, right? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, of yeah, Because if anybody else does, I'm, I'm on the short list. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so closely tied, in my opinion, to morality, and maybe you guys will think I am dead wrong on this, but I think closely tied to morality is legacy. Um, and I think that is more Im- immortality. Yeah, I, I yeah. think you're you're absolutely right there. It's the only type of immortality that we have the a, ability possibility yeah, yeah. of achieving right I, now. I, I think I, I think legacy is how you you know it is how you are immortal. I mean, uh, I would argue that uh, that Muhammad is immortal, that Jesus is immortal, that Confucius is immortal, John Lennon and, and, and Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney's still alive. Keith For Richards now. is immortal. He may be immor- Keith, immortal. Keith, we don't know yet. Keith, Keith Richards is, is immortal. immortal. Is immortal. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, but. You know, when you talk about legacy, there's a really interesting, uh, I'm going to use the word marriage, that happens there because we we do know, or at least, yeah, I think we have to know because even if one person is right, everyone else is wrong, that the legacy you leave behind is not necessarily your legacy, not necessarily what you would say at the time, Mm -hmm. but your words mixed with the internal emotions of the reader. It's the interpretation of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so so in that regard, you know... Oftentimes, it's it's quite a bit different from your original goal. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's like making a child. You only get to control half of it, right? <laughs> um, and, and, Not even that much. Who yeah. are we kidding? And then there's there's that other there's that other person, that partner that gets to control the other half. And and so we would like to think that our legacy is our own immortality, but it it, it really is a new child of ours. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And 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 you know your words, your your words get. Uh, they they get bent out of shape. They get mm-hmm. they get changed. Uh, I think about uh, you know Karl Marx. You know with with with, with communism and his mm-hmm. him and Engels with this whole whole idea that, that that spread around the world. They wouldn't recognize their legacy. They wouldn't right. recognize what's out there calling itself communism today. Mm-hmm. Uh, think about Thomas Jefferson uh, and, and the founding fathers. They wouldn't recognize what we have in our, in our nation today. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but we are we are their legacy. Yeah. Um, it, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, and, and and Einstein gave birth to his own demon. Uh, uh, yeah, his yeah. his ideas led to quantum physics, which he staunchly disagreed with through yeah. most of his life. I, I think he maybe became a little more accepting near the end. Oppenheimer and the bomb. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So so he he gave he gave birth to his own demon child. Yeah. John so, Lennon and I am the walrus. Yes. And you have perpetuated this is that all one. about yes, music today. Yes. <laughs> yes. um, but so we see um, family businesses. We see um, innovators who are trying to change the world um, and trying to leave their own imprint on it. Um, we see families who pass on their names and things like that. And and what it is that you're trying to do is you're trying to build a legacy that will survive you. Yeah. Um, if you will survive perpetually, and, and I guess, again, we are discussing the idea that humans can't die. Yeah. Um, so if you will be, if you will live perpetually, That's is there, terrible. yeah. Is there a drive to create a legacy um, and if there's not a drive to create a legacy, how does that impact things like 
innovation um, technology? Does it drive us forward faster because we don't have this no, this thing kind of holding our around our necks of I have to build a legacy of myself that and we can be freed down. by that? Or is that exactly you know? Or is that the case where um, since we don't have that driving factor, we aren't as inspired to? Interview. I've got more time, so I'm not going to write that great book now. I've got plenty of time to write that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I, 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 that, that's... One thing I do want to do is is kind of frame what we're talking about, because I think it's unimaginable. Um, and, and I think maybe this thought experiment will help people kind of get in the mindset of what we're talking about when we say live forever. We, I think a lot of times when we talk about living forever, people imagine something close to living till the sun burns out. But something we need to realize in this conversation is that is infinitely closer to how long we live now than living forever yeah mm-hmm. that is 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 mind numbingly uh, uh yeah, impossible it, it, to, it, to interpret well and that's the perspective from which i wonder if it would not actually free us to be more innovative because we would recognize that with our own perpetual life we would have to expand beyond our own galaxy. Well, and I, I think I think you would take. I think we, society would take better care of resources because you've got, you know, it's, it's it's not it's not this abstract of what am I leaving for my grandkids. It's what am I what am I doing for me? Yeah. But but I, I think which you're, is a powerful motivator. I think you're still looking at this in in, in mortal terms mm-hmm. because you say we would have to expand out past the galaxy. Why? We would survive the burnout of the sun. Yeah. We cannot die. Yeah. yeah. But, but but what would you what would your life be you would float around in space until you land on another rock but what would it matter it's just a blink in the 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 eye of your lifetime yeah i mean why would you need to expand anywhere you're going to be there eventually yeah well and i think um i think that we have and maybe we wouldn't become accustomed to the niceties that we have this should have been a scotch episode because i'm getting depressed (laughs) yeah i have a tiny bottle of jack daniels on my microwave if you want it (laughs) don't tip me (laughs) okay um but anyway, so um, where was I going with that? What was the last thing you said? Uh, I, I was talking about drifting in space eternally until we find the rock that we laid yeah. on next. Oh, okay. So maybe the argument there is that we wouldn't become accustomed to the niceties that we have because we do know that they are temporary. Um, however, I think that if we were still prone to becoming accustomed to those niceties, that that is why we would pursue other places um and and maybe the thing that we would pursue is an attempt to make the universe immortal too yeah i I don't think this this conversation lends itself well or the the idea of immortality lends itself well to being pondered sitting in a room like this i think the confinement of it even limits our thought i think and and i don't think this is a an an absolute way to do it but i think this conversation is best had out on a starry night looking into the heavens yeah because i mean that's the vastness you need to be looking into to really ponder these ideas and even that's limited yes yeah you know uh i don't know this is this this boggles my mind and it's 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 a sad 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 it's fun imagine sitting around Ah. watching the stars drift i mean imagine imagine this uh actually this is something really interesting that that i learned recently I think we most of us know if you don't go check it out, it's awesome. Uh, our galaxy is actually on a collision course with Andromeda right now, yeah, yeah. and uh, you know, thousands if not millions of years from now, there's a small like really colorful dot in the sky that is the Andromeda galaxy, and it's going to grow and grow, and eventually it will brighten and engulf the night sky. We will see this beautiful like span of our entire view of the night sky. And that we'll is crash into it. Andromeda. And you know, it's funny, you know, when we talk about crashing into it, uh, very few, if any, uh, stars are, are expect to collide. It, there's so much space between them that yeah. they'll just kind of merge. But we'll see the stars just moving around. And it was it's one of those things where we could sit and just watch that. We could plan a, a thousand years to sit around and just watch the stars move around. Yeah. That would be a, a state that would be a, a reasonable and, and even maybe desirable state to do. Just lay out there for... Zoltan is right. That's what I'm going to do. 
for a thousand years and just watch that. Yeah. If Zoltan's right, I'm looking for a, for a way to end the immortality because I don't mm-hmm. want to, I don't want, you know, you got this, the, the, you think of all the good side of it, you know, that, mm-hmm. you know, you, you get to live forever, you get to experience, you get to expand your wealth, you get to, to be with those that you love, but you also get to spend, spend you know, eternity with the same dumbass assholes that, that drive you crazy right now. Well, and wealth but becomes... But would they stay assholes and would they stay dumb? Because yeah. I remember... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I am so fucking hopeful. Hey, hey, well, I'm just coming out of the pool hall with me one night. We'll, we'll talk. Then we'll have this okay. discussion. Okay. Um, but one of the things that I... Spooby. One of the... <laughs> evolved Spooby. Spooby is evolving. Spooby is evolving. Thank you. He'll be walking you upright in no time. <laughs> but but um, one of the he things... He doesn't listen. ...that I have... He would laugh if he was. He was. He was. Which is what's great. Um, but one of the things that I've observed in in my own short life is that people who were assholes when they were younger got out, got into the real world, realized it was bigger than themselves, which is something we would have to contend with if we were immortal, um, and weren't such assholes and weren't so stupid anymore. I have not seen that. Well, I have, I have seen not. that. But I've seen that in some cases, but I've seen a lot of cases where, where once an asshole, always an asshole. I've seen that. I, I'm one of those. I think, well, I wouldn't. Uh, you. You've evolved I over the show. I, I don't want to say I, 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 wouldn't I put have, you in that but, category. I have, but I've become no less of an asshole. Yeah. I wouldn't put you in that category. You're a new asshole. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, I would argue or, or question, I suppose, whether or not those people ever realized that the world was bigger than their limited scope that they were observing it through. Well, and, and how could you really say the universe is bigger than your limited scope? You will be in every point of it at some point, you know? I mean, how can you really... Re- we can rationalize that now because we live a limited life, but I think yeah. that's a product of our mortality, yeah. not yeah. not in spite of it. Yeah. Um, you could find out if there is an edge, if there is an end to things. Yeah, I'm just going to go here until in, in, until I find the end. And yeah. and you can't ever say, like, well, I'm going to stop now because it's clearly not in, because there's no reason to stop. You have infinite time to come back as well, you know? Yeah, but you know that what? That sounds we, like so much fun to me. You know what we would do as as, as as people? We wouldn't we wouldn't do that. We wouldn't spend our time exploring the universe. We would spend our time uh, endlessly searching the Internet, trying to find the end of it. That's what we would, what we would be doing. I think some people would. As, as, I a, would as, legit, as a society, as yeah. a society, I think we would. No, um, I, I mean, I, I'd like to think I wouldn't do that, but I look at a society, and you know, you just, you, you just find every nook and cranny of the nasty web, and that's what, we, what people would spend their time doing, mm-hmm. indulging all of their fantasies, indulging every. Uh, yeah, I, I think we would do a lot of indulging. Indulging every, uh, every whim. Well, and here's something I think that we should consider. You go first. I was just going to gonna say, if, if you want to do some very light dive into this, uh, one of the things really early in my life, well before the show came out, that got me really thinking about this topic. There's an episode of Star Trek. I don't remember the name mm-hmm. of the episode, but it, it's a it's basically uh, if anyone's familiar with the the, the being Q uh, on, on the the series, he's a, a godlike deity, and and he didn't even call that's us- not the real Star Trek. Uh, Next generation. Yeah, yeah, that's it's the, the only Star Trek. That's not the real Star Trek. Um, but there's a there's a B and Q who is. There was is, no B and Q in the real Star Trek. Yeah. Okay. But there was no captain either. But. <laughs> but anyway. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> but th- this being like Star Trek. <laughs> this being Q. You out of that chair. <laughs> This being Q is is what we would consider a god, and even he says, "Well, there's more powerful beings than me. I'm, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm mm-hmm. nobody." But but he is part of an immortal and eternal and and vastly infinite series of beings to the point that they even consider themselves both independent and part of each other. Yeah, and 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 they end up going to this 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 realm that the Qs live in. And it's represented to to the humans that are taken there because the trial is Q wants to die, and the other Qs say no, you can't die. It would it would throw chaos into everything. We're not going to allow you to die. So they imprison him. Um, so they take him there, and and it there's a scene that is supposed to be the representation of what they see of of their universe, of the uh, of of the Q uh, the Q verse I think it's called, um, but it's just this little farmhouse on the side of a road, and he said you know. 
we've all done everything. I was a chair for a little while. Then I was a house. I've been the scarecrow. I was the grass. I was, I was this, and we've done it all. And there's nothing really to do. I'm, I, I want to try something else. I want to die. That's that's something new. And and um, it, it's part of this trial. But I think it, it's a really shallow way to play with some of those ideas in ways that you know you you might. It's a little deeper than a cursory thinking about it. Yeah. But it's I'm gonna say probably a little shallower than some of the deep philosophy that has been done on it. But it, it's a really good introductory to this. If you ever get a chance, hmm. um, I guess look up uh, Star Trek Q Death Trials. I'm here, sure it'll pull up. Here, here, here's my my question about immortality: is is if if you are immortal now, are you not a god? I mean, are you not? I mean, have you not reached that level where, where you, know, you live so long, you can amass so much knowledge, you can amass so much experience? Can you not attain this? Level of well, I think one of the qualities of a god, as at least as far as we understand them, uh, tends to have an element of being a well, two elements really. One of being a creator. Um, it doesn't have to be a creator to be a god, but and yes. another of having some element of control over um, a specific realm of well, of the universe. No, okay, but but I, I think if. Maybe if everybody's immortal, you don't do it. Mm-hmm. But if some people attain that... Yeah, well, then, if everybody's then, immortal, isn't everybody also dead? What? I'm lost. That's, that's, that's every, okay, we'll move on If everybody's there. dead, is everybody immortal then? <laughs> yes. Okay. Anyway. I think she's doing a Schrodinger's cat yeah. uh, argument <laughs> yeah. there. Uh, but, but, but the one commonality I see in all God stories is that gods are unbounded by the rules of man. And so I think if you talk about immortality... Well, wouldn't you be, though? Well, I think if we talk about immortality, we, we have sat there and removed a rule, which would seem to make us godlike, but we're still bound by rules of locality, by, well, okay, you know... but let's talk about different... We'd be demigods. Let's yeah. talk about, 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 about gods here, because you, you wouldn't be Yahweh. You right. wouldn't be a creator. But maybe you're bald or a Thor. Yeah, exactly, yeah. You know, yeah. You're, you're, you know, you're, 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 you know, you're godlike. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, maybe not a creator, but it, you know, it, and, and that's that's terrifying to me. Just, just because of human nature. You know, you get that. We know that man, when they get power, they abuse it. We is know it, they do. Is it power if everybody has it? You know, we have the ability to conjure up information well, and make lights out of electricity. You know, now, you know, you when know. it when it becomes power is 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 you know uh, assuming and 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 I, and I do assume because of. Just basic mathematics to me, that that there's probably other life in the world somewhere, and suddenly you're immortal and they're not. Well, yeah, but we have power of bacteria right now. Well, we, yeah, we, yeah, we yeah. and we wield it uh, uh, yeah. thoughtlessly. Well, and AI and yeah, exactly, uh, yeah. exactly. Uh, yeah. Uh, and you talked about about you know gods have to be able to create. Well, with AI, you know we can cr- we can create whole worlds. Well, we've had, we, we've had shows on that. We can at least create other immortal beings. Yeah. You know, yeah. As, yeah. 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 Assuming we still reproduce in some manner. Yeah. Yeah. Would that be a good idea? I don't know. Um, <coughs> so a a fun question that I would like for us to consider, although I'm I'm also considering that maybe we should rate this beer first. I'm fine with rating the beer. Let's yeah, rate let's, the beer. Let's, let's go ahead and do that. Who wants to start this one? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm really torn on this because I am trying. I am to- not torn. Just so you know. Okay. I, I'm trying really hard to be fair, and I, I don't really want this beer right now. Um, or rather, it's enjoyable. It is delicious. You can taste that it was it was definitely aged, and what was that whiskey or yeah whiskey barrels? Um, and it's it's got a good balance. It tastes like a red. It's smooth. You can tell there's alcohol in there. You, mm-hmm. you, they haven't yeah. smoothed out the alcohol. It is awesome. And it's gonna get get a high rating from me. On the other hand, I uh, I'm just not in the mood to drink that right now, so I'm trying to temper mm-hmm. my own current taste and rate this beer. So you know, just kind of give you some context. That said, it is smooth on the palate, a, a bit rough on the back end, but only a bit, and, and almost in, in a pleasurable way. Like you can you can really tell uh, that that you're you're drinking something substantial. This is, and I think we'll see this more in the lawnmower rating, this is not a casual drinker's beer. I mean, each drink of the beer is is yeah. an almost taxing experience. Does that make sense? Not taxing in, in a negative way, but in... It takes an effort. Yes, exactly. 
um, and, and it's overpowering in some in some respects. But that said, I would hope anyone who gets a whiskey barrel aged beer would expect that out of yeah, what they're yeah. getting. Um, so that said, I'll go ahead and give my rating. I'm going to give a three seven. Okay, it's still getting a high rating. It is a great beer. Um, uh, Odell has 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 done this right. The only thing where I can really knock it is the whiskey aging kind of takes away from some of its properties as a red Mm -hmm. they still hold on to it to an extent but um on the other hand how hard can you knock it for something that advertises itself as such yeah yeah uh so three seven yeah it's a good rating yeah it is it is i i I was worried worried about that for you know for a minute that you were going to come come no two five or something and i was going to be be upset with you um Uh this um I really like this beer. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the, to me. This is this is a. Uh, it's it's both a red done well and a a, a whiskey barrel aged done well. Uh, I've had some whiskey barrel, and and, and 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 that's one of my favorite favorite kind of beers to have is something that's that, that's that's aged in a, in, a, mm-hmm. in a cask. But I've had some that the the whiskey is alcohol is so overpowering yeah. that it's hard to drink. This is not hard to drink. Right. It's uh it, it it's it's smooth actually. Now there's that alcohol bite on the back end, but it's not unpleasant. Right. Yeah. Um, it's a thin <coughs> beer. I'm not knocking it for that because most of your reds are thin beers. Mm-hmm. So I'm not. That's not a problem. It's got a gorgeous color, a gorgeous bouquet to the smell. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I there I, I can't I can't point at anything at this beer that I don't like. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it, it's not a beer you're going to want to have four of. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's, but but it's it, it's a really good one off beer. One of these is the right number. Yeah. Yes. One of these is the right number, and uh, I'm going to go right about the same place you are, but I'm going to go a little higher. I'm going to go three eight. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go 3-3. Three, three. Um, I Fired. <laughs> Why do we have you on the show? Oh, oh, That's oh, a good oh. question. Because <laughs> she's a star, remember? Yeah, yeah. <sighs> By the way, if you haven't had this with coffee, it's uh, it, it pairs well. Oh, maybe that was my problem. It pairs yeah. well. No. Um, I, I do really like this beer. Um, and, and honestly, it is... <sighs> there were a few things that kind of knocked it for me the smell is good but it's reminiscent of like high quality dry dog food to me hmm? and not that that's a bad smell <laughs> yeah really stick your nose in there it smells like high quality dry dog food i don't i'm not the fuck have you up. been drinking <laughs> before this Here, i'm gonna pull air through it <laughs> That sound is fantastic, John. I just, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not picking it up. I, I really. I really don't know what you, what the hell you're talking about. But it still smells good. Um, you need to stop eating the dog food. So I'm telling you. Smell, smell. That's, that's what she asked me to take her out for our last anniversary. <laughs> so. So anyway, um, I I, I do, knew y'all were in tough times, but come on. <laughs> yeah. I had the steak. I don't know. <laughs> that, was, that was her thing. Yeah. Um, but. <coughs> It is, it's pleasant to drink. I think being an Imperial Red, it is thin. I think it could stand to be a little heftier. Um, I, I, I don't. Listen, it got a 3-3, three, three, okay? I yeah. should have less to say about it, that, that, yeah, even yeah, if you disagree that's, with that's, it. That's low, that's low. That's low. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying, that's low. Um, uh, we're going to reevaluate your beer ratings. My beer ratings are pretty good. Your beer ratings are <laughs> shit. If uh, that's a low rating, well, for this beer, this beer is good. It's even. I want to see something. Hold up. I'm gonna pull right. up beer advocates. Um, well, obviously, yeah, pull up beer li- advocates. Li- like anything else, there's uh, you know, there's there's just different taste for things, mm-hmm. and, and uh, you know, you have you have three different people with three different, totally different uh, yeah. uh, styles of beers. Yeah. Well, and I would buy this beer again. Yeah. Yeah. If I saw it. Um, I would recommend this beer to friends. Anything over a three, I would though. Yeah, me you too. know. Oh, you can think over a two five, probably. Three point nine seven. Yeah. Is you guys a, are low. Is that on a four the point fuck? scale? Uh, five. Five. Yeah. Yeah. A yeah. Four point scale. Yeah. Well, I was curious. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know what beer advocate was. I yeah. couldn't remember. It um, is very good, and its rating number among all beers is. How much we'll find yeah. it? Okay. Anyway. But, uh, anyway. That was a. Uh, you know, I. I I th- again, I think that's that's probably pretty close to accurate. So this is what somewhere we came in at a three point six. Yeah, yeah, it's Which, fine. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a good overall rate. Yeah, um, lawnmower beer? No, not a lawnmower beer. Um, uh, you know where what I would like with this beer? Um, 
I could see sitting like sitting on the, sitting at the beach and having this beer. I, I think it's I think it's good for that. After uh, dark, and yeah, after dark, not during the heat of after the day. After dark, yeah. Uh, but I sitting out at the lake and you know at 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 the end of the day at twilight. Um, this but, would be a great beer to have if like your old high school friend came over that you hadn't seen in years. And you cracked open a bottle of this and sat around and, and, and talked about old times. Or that old high school girlfriend that you, uh, you, know, you, you distinctly remember uh, having sex with and you'd like to have sex with again. Yeah, crack one of these open. <laughs> Speaking so, of which. So I think Mike so, is saying this will get you laid. So that takes us to the next rating. Uh, what do you think, uh, Madam Mistress? I, I, I think it will. Yeah. Um, I think it is She'll a... She'll sleep with someone over a 3.3. I just want to let you know. <laughs> I'll go to 2.5. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Michael, you just get beer too, Mike. You're fine. <laughs> Good beer. Um, Real beer. Not, Budweiser. Not, just all... The- no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll get just slapped. But anyway, um, and I, I think there are some elements of it here because this is a special release beer. So um, I think you get some impressive points there. Which is a shame. Well, look. Why is that a shame? Because this is a beer that I would like to be like to be able to go get. Anytime. You'd like this to be okay. Budweiser. Like I yeah. thought you were get... saying it was a shame that you would get points for it. No, it's a shame that that it's only available at certain times. Yeah, but um, but you is. know that's part of that's part of the, the that's part of the beer process. Yeah. You yeah. know, it probably takes quite a bit longer to make. It's mm-hmm. probably a more expensive product, and to they're make. probably using in season ingredients. Yeah. That's probably part of what special release. Yeah. yeah. But so I, I think it gets you points because you have I mean, it's better than brought Killian's in Red. something that is um, that is hard to find, hard to get, um, or harder. Let me ask. Mostly. Let me ask you this before we get to John's rating because uh, you know if you, if you if you compare this with a mass produced red like like with a with a Killian's Red, uh, which you know it's for a mass produced beer is not a bad beer. What would you? What, how would you compare this to that? God, it's been so long since I've had that. Um, and that's put out by Coors, I think. Yeah, it, it would get under a two rating. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, would, I mean, would, there's a big spread. But if, but, but if you're a, if there's you're a, a significant spread between the two. of them. But if you're a fan of the Killian's Red, do you think you'd be a fan of this? It's it's significantly stronger, but I think I you do. would. Um, I do. I think that um, it might it, it might make it might the Killian's you. Disappointing. Might make the Killians taste like Kool Aid. Yeah. But but you know uh, that's kind of I wondered that because you know we probably have some listeners that are familiar with that and not other Reds. Mm-hmm. So uh, you know kind of that's kind of where, where I would put it. What do you think, John? On the dates. Um, so I'm going to call this a special occasion beer. You could use it as a first date beer, but only if you knew them ahead of time. This is not a blind date beer. This is not. I just yeah. met you, and you want to pull this out. This is um, this would be great for your, you know, you've been dating for a while and it's some kind of anniversary. Yeah, I don't agree. Pull, pull this out. You think there's a first date beer? I think it's a first date beer. I think, uh, I, I, I really, I you really get it on the first date. I really think that if, 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 uh, if, if you get this beer out and, and on your first date and she doesn't like this beer, you're probably not going to have much in common with them. First I, date, not a blind date though. I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to spend the extra money on a blind date. Like I'll spend a little extra, but well, not, but, but if see, it, not, wa- it washes out later because if they don't like it, you you don't have to take other dates later. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's, it's it's good for. I think there. Wash out. <laughs> I think there are other more economically efficient weed out beers. Okay, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So 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 here's why why the two reasons I'm not putting it on a first date beer. Uh, first of all, uh, as I said earlier, drinking this is not casual. No. It it, it is an experience every sip, and I would not want it to distract. From the conversation you're trying to have, I think it, it would overpower. Yeah, the but day. you're a lot more interesting than I am, so I would want this to distract well, it everything. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> right. yeah, yeah maybe, maybe that's the case. The other thing is, I do have some worry that if you pull this out, if you pull out a wizard, a lizard of Cosby, if you pull out yeah. any of those, you have set yourself up to a yeah, standard you, you can't hold yourself yeah, to yeah. for the rest of the relationship. Yeah, lizard of Cause is absolutely not a first first date exactly, beer, but exactly. I, I think I think this could be. Yeah. That's also why when you bang, you don't bring your best moves the first time. You bring good moves, but not the best moves. Yeah, you save <laughs> save the handcuffs for the second time. Yeah, I don't know. I I think if you bring out your 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 best moves on the first date, and then your moves don't get better from there on, it's not the problem that you need to stagger yourself. The well, problem is you weren't you weren't putting in the work. God, we could have a whole discussion on this, but we have a show to do. We do have a show to do. <laughs> I will just say, I disagree with you in a way. Okay. But not Fair entirely. <laughs> Anna, always. I'm just, I'm just saying you're going to get my best moves for the for, for the full 15 minutes every time. <laughs> 15 <laughs> minutes, Mike? Man. 
You're we gotta doing talk better later, than right? mo- hold on. I've been He's doing out. better than most of America. Yeah, I'm I've just been saying. working out. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I didn't learn that regiment. <laughs> so, um, one of the questions that I would like to consider here is: Is living like you are going to die tomorrow the same as living as if you're immortal? No. And why not? Because I think living like you're going to die tomorrow means I've got to rush. I've got to. I've got to do everything right now. Mm-hmm. I've got to get it all done. Living like you're immortal means you know I've got plenty of time so I can sit down and watch mm-hmm. binge watch NCIS today because I've got plenty of time to write my book tomorrow. Yeah. Well, and and let me ask the question. In this, hold on. In this world, do you imagine that when people are immortal, deadlines go away? Well, I think you. I just. Yeah, I think so because it doesn't matter. Why? What, what does a deadline matter? Okay, so like uh, factories would all shut down. If I'm immortal, I'm not working in a factory. Mm-mm. Nope. No, if I'm immortal, I'm, I'm, I'm an author or I'm doing, I'm doing something like that. Okay, so in your mind, society would crumble. Yeah, probably. Okay. Well, yeah. So because nobody would work anymore. Nobody because would they've work. Got, and nobody Why would, would you? try to because buy things anymore. You don't, you, don't, you don't need to save money for, for housing or food or anything because you can't die. So, well, and, and it's exactly that point why I think they, they are the same, because um, what we see is a huge amount of human capital going toward <coughs> sustaining the human condition. Going toward, prolonging toward, life toward, as long as yeah, you can. Yeah, going towards sustaining life. However, what we see when people reach their end of life is they no longer want to sustain their life. I mean, they may, but they're unable to. So all their capital shifts to... What they really wanted to do. They, they go yeah. out, they, they charge with the credit cards, they do what they want. And so where I think that there may be some similarities there is if you never had that drive to sustain life, because life will be sustained, wouldn't you just spend your entire life, every day of your life, doing whatever your whims were that day? You know, and, and you could charge up infinite credit because you have infinite time to pay it off, no matter how deep in debt you got. Well, according at some, to Mike, at money some wouldn't point, exist. At some point, they're going to shut your credit off, though. So, well, and then you pay it off and you build your credit But how do you again? pay it off? Because you're not working. Because, because society no longer exists. Because you made a, a, a really nice art piece that somebody likes and said, I would like that. And you give it to them for, you know, whatever it is. It, it's no longer about food. It, it's about entertaining somebody. Yeah. Maybe... Maybe you decide that that you want to, you know, sexually pleasure somebody for three years as as your payment. You know, what, whatever. That's a, long time. It, that's a long time. It is a long time. Wait, you mean like year. straight? Straight through? Maybe. Who knows? Okay. I mean, anyway, sorry. It doesn't it's matter. But but hey, but, but uh, bringing you and me got to get together later. <laughs> I need to borrow some money, Mike. <laughs> but but um but uh but the thing is, it, I think it all becomes very hedonistic. It becomes very pleasure based because it's I think no, it does. It's no longer about Sustaining life, it's about you know making yourself happy in any given moment. Yeah, but but you know what makes you happy now? I, I do think I do think you put some things off. I think I think there's not as much of a hurry to do things. Yeah, um, yeah, I agree with that. You know, so uh, you know, I I've always wanted to take that trip to China. Well, I, I'll take that later. I've got I've got plenty of time mm-hmm. right now. Right now, I'm going to spend my money on you know what I want right now. And do you take the boat to China? Or you say, you know what? I'm gonna walk to China. I'm gonna I'm gonna swim. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's just take a swim to Why China. Why swim? Because you you're not gonna drown. drown. Yeah. yeah, you just walk on the ground. Yeah, I guess you can't get there. Oh, uh, yeah, you yeah you can't get to the ground. It would take a while. It would take a while. You can't get to the ground. Why not? Mm-hmm. Wait, wait, I'm lost. Well, guess, why? Why well, can you no longer reach the ground when you're well, no, immortal? I guess you wouldn't. No, well, the ground under the water. Yeah. Why, why can you no longer reach that? So like I had this idea of like the pressure would crush you, but I guess it would crush you, but you wouldn't die. I don't know if, what happens what there. What happens if a shark eats you? <laughs> well, and the pressure doesn't crush you. I don't know. How do you not die from I don't that? I fucking know. Maybe you just digest, you poop out, you keep going. Pa- get back, do you all come back together? <laughs> yeah, you're like the, 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 the Terminator that was like the liquid metal. He just like... This is disturbing. This, this, this is going into like science fiction now. We're, uh, we are living far too much right now in that, reality. <laughs> this is I, most... I, really, I really think it's a more interesting question, though, if you say, what if some people are immortal and others aren't? Oh, yeah. Because I think that's what would happen first. That creates a power disparity. And, and you know, one thing we know about life is uh-huh. while it collects low entropy, it also well, feeds off it. Here's the deal. I think I think if, if, if immortality is invented, you know, for some the magic pill that you can get to be immortal, it, it, it's very expensive. Mm-hmm. The rich get it. And because of human nature, 
they are not going to want to give it to everybody. Mm-hmm. So you, you you would you would naturally have some people that 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 become the uh, you know the the blessed the uh, you know the lucky ones, and intentionally large parts of society would not get that, and they would be the worker bees. Mm-hmm. And I, I you know whether that's not what we want, but I think that's what society would do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's just that's what we do. Mm-hmm. You know, we we did it with slaves. We did it with Indians. I think we. I think they'd just be another underclass. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, did you ever see the movie Logan's Run? Nope. It was big in the seventies before you were born, but it was a uh, it, it was a science fiction book. Uh, but it, in this book, uh, everybody, you know, you, you lived at, at thirty five. You were sent off, and uh, I think it was maybe it was thirty. It was thirty, I think. But you were sent Damn. off, and uh, and nobody was You're over, about to be out of here. Nobody baby. was over thirty. But they were all told that that these these guys that went off they were going off to, to somewhere uh, you know to retire and everything happened. The place the dog goes when yeah, the dog yeah, goes yeah. away. But in reality, what was happening was the older people were being used as a, as a slave labor force to, uh, to 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 care for the younger. Right. I think the reverse would happen in this situation, where where the you know the, you, you you we would enslave large parts of the population mm-hmm. in order to have our our enjoy our immortality. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there is a significant possibility there. And that was actually a question that I wanted to consider because, well, we're jumping back and forth between consider, considering this practically and considering this philosophically. Yeah. And I think practically. I think they're tied. We go ahead. They are tied. But they're also different. Um, because I think when you consider it practically, you do have to look at situations like that. And one of the questions that I wanted to consider. Uh, or things that I, I guess I wanted to point out is that we have to distinguish whether we are considering these from the perspective of a snap of the fingers, everybody is immortal, or everybody has always been immortal, um, or if we are looking at it from a suddenly everybody is immortal, or some people are immortal and it's kind of an evolutionary thing. Um, if it's an evolutionary thing, I would have to question how it is that we come to find out that they're immortal. Um, they don't die? How long? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, my God, this person lived for 115 years. Well, the... You would always be expecting him to die. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, he's 200 now. He's got to die sometime. Yeah. But... I, I, I say yeah. that about, about some of the people in my family, so, I mean... Yeah. And Keith Richards. Yes. And Keith, and Keith Richards. Richards. I'm not sure he's ever been mentioned more in one show. Yeah, you know. But this is an appropriate topic for that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you ever notice how much he looks like Andrew Jackson in the $20 bill? No, I have noticed how he looks like a corpse, though. Yeah, I just thought I'd share that with you. Did Andrew Jackson look like a corpse? Now we have a <laughs> yeah. deep question. He almost got got me there. <laughs> almost. Almost. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, here's an interesting question, especially considering some of the recent episodes that we've done. Um, how does... And I think there's a greater question here, but I think this one specifically will be interesting to discuss. But how does immortality affect marriage? And yeah. and in marriage, yeah. I'm referencing what I would call perpetual contracts. Yeah. Contracts for forever. Yeah. Or death. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think humans have a hard enough time uh, and, and, and a lot of angst is spent uh, both before and after marriage picking one partner for our very limited scope of life. Yeah. Imagine if if you were asked to pick a partner to the death of the universe, you know. Yeah, yeah, that would well, be. Well, and I think one of the things that the gods couldn't do it. Yeah. No. One of could. the things that I think that we are doing whenever we enter into a marriage is that we're attempting to provide ourselves with some sort of limited amount of security through the rest of our lives. Yes. Well, and, um, and that wouldn't be necessary anymore. Well, the thing is, imagine, you know, over 70 years, you know, we evolve and we change. But imagine how, how much you would change as an individual over a thousand years. Yeah. And if that person that you, that, that you married didn't change, you know, in the same patterns that you did, you know, well, you evolve it, differently. And Anna put forward an idea when we were discussing this previously, and it's funny because it's it's one that that we kind of adopted, mm-hmm. uh, you know, somewhat jokingly, but <laughs> but I, I think there was kind of seriously. There was a point to the joke. Yeah, there was a it, it is is the point. But whenever whenever we got married, 
I said, I'll give you 70 years. At the end of 70 years, I'm trading you in. Yeah. And so that's been the, the running thing. And so we have a countdown. We have 65 more years left, right? I told my wife when she turned 40, I was trading in for two 20s. It didn't, uh, didn't work out. <laughs> didn't take. You realize that 20 is not actually that appealing? Yeah, yeah. Now, They're kind of annoying. Now Love she's 45 and, you know, I'm waiting until she hits 50 so I can get two 25s. Yeah. <laughs> By the time she hits 50, you'll realize that 25 is also annoying. <laughs> But um, but I think there's something to be said for saying we can get married for 70 years and then we'll we'll kind of reevaluate. I'm, I'm yeah. making a 70 year commitment here, yeah. and then we'll reevaluate what that means or yeah. you know seven thousand years but, or whatever the number is. But yeah. is is that more terrifying than you know uh, select immortality where I'm immortal, but time after time I'm going to fall in love and I'm going to my, my wife is not immortal and I'm going to watch her die. Mm-hmm. And another one, time after time, this happens. That would be terrible. It would be terrible. Um, I, I don't, I don't know. think and that outliving that... your children because because yeah. they're not immortal, you know, yeah. assuming they're not. Right. You know that. Wow. I don't know if it'd be terrible. I, I think it would be very much the difference in the very comfortable life that we live as Americans in 2018 versus the lives that that people lived, you know, even in the same area before us. And we say, it'd be horrible living and, that time period, but they were perfectly happy. No, to live and, it, there, and it was terrible. Know? And it was terrible. They weren't you know? happy. I mean, no, they weren't. No. You, well, nobody was happy until 2018. No, no, they, 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 I mean, they, 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 suffered, they suffered with a loss. I mean, they, they suffered comparatively, yeah, but yeah. they were happy in their own time. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. I, I, I think they were satisfied. I don't know if happy is the right word. Well, I think that's all we we all are. I think we're satisfied. Yeah, and I think so in the too. future they look back 2018 like look at the horrible, horrible life, life conditions. They had. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they were racist. And my they grandfather were, you know. used to used, used to say the good old times weren't so good, and and, and I think he was right. Yeah. Uh, and just 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 living through that time after time after time has got to be horrible. I don't think I'd want to do it. I I think it would be. Lonely if you were the only one like that, um, but I I would imagine you would have to come to some sort of philosophical understanding, um, a different understanding than what we have in our exp- in our uh, understanding. I think it would be horrible, but your yeah. understanding would have to change. Well, and I, I think I think human nature would have to change too because I you know. I'm a historian. Human nature wouldn't change if you're the only immortal. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm a historian, and I live so much of my life in the past with this stuff. So I look at this stuff, and I think to myself, my God, the the literature was better, used to be better. The, the movies used to be better. The music used to be better. Do I want to live through the continuing decline of all of this? Uh but that's the historian in me talking, you know. And other the people, other people, other people look at that and they go, "No, it's gotten better and it's gotten better." That's not the way I see the world. Well, well and I'm the just historian, swing. and you should recognize the cyclical nature of it. Well, so on, on, on some things, I I, I, I agree. Uh, without a doubt, I, without a doubt, on human rights, it's much, much better. Well, but on art, I don't think it. I don't think it no, is better. No, I, I think we would. See, we saw the Renaissance. We've seen the modern Renaissance. I think we would see another. Does suffering beget art? Yeah, I think it does. So, I'm, oh shit! W- one thing I'm I'm waiting on, right, is one day you'll grow old and die, and you'll take that walrus song with you. It'll be it'll be gone. Expert, the text for choking smokers. See, Don't you think go. the Joker laughs? At you? Yeah, that whole Goo-goo walrus song. You. It's a great song, by the way. Uh, you just like that it has choking smokers in it. Yeah, you know, probably, yes. probably. Yeah. So. Um, it's the Beatles. It's awesome. Ooh, well, let me ask that. Uh, is there a reference for suffering in, in, in an immortal time frame? I mean. Does suffering take on something different? Yeah. No, I think you're still suffering. I think you suffer eternally. Uh, time so heals much... all wounds. No, it doesn't. Yes. No, it doesn't. Just because you read that in a fortune cookie doesn't mean oh, it's, make it's true. Oh, for fuck's sake. You time cannot does tell not me heal that you all have... wounds. No, you cannot tell me that you have not suffered some issue and some fucking terrible thing and that over time you didn't get the fuck over it. Hey, Never you, mind, you, I realize. Things become... <laughs> <laughs> Things become bearable. Things become bearable. But time does not heal all wounds. Yes, but you, you said have, it. No, I have scars. Yep. Those wounds are healed. Yep. Yes. They're, they're bearable. Yeah. Bearable. Yep. But it is healed. But you just said it. You said it. Time makes all things bearable. And I think that's what... But bearable happened. is not the same thing as healing. Yeah. No, no, no. Well, but but you were talking about how awful it would be to see all your friends die. It would be bearable. It would be fine. Well, it would be an expectation that you had. I agree. I agree. Yeah. It, it would be bearable. But it doesn't mean it would be good. 
I don't. I think it would. I, th- I, I think. I think, I think your definition you, of good. Would I think change. you could live with it, but you would hate hate it. But here's the thing. I'm sure much worse things would happen, and then those things would be the new standard bad, and this would be yeah. fine. You I know? can't wait for the next Black Death to come yeah, along. Exactly. You know. Some I have great no faith in people. Out of that. I have no faith in people. Uh, I know. Yeah. There's yeah. my problem. Yeah. Yeah. I look around and I go, "We fuck up everything." I don't. I, immortals fucking up everything is not better. I think that. <laughs> I think that if immortality was a thing, that well, I wonder rather. I'm just saying, Donald Trump gets on, to live forever too. Well, That's yeah. Fine. No, no, it's so not. <laughs> from Donald Trump, we can move on to crime and punishment. Okay. So it seems appropriate right now. <laughs> yeah. So um, there's an interesting thing that that there's a, there are studies that have been done that indicate that when a judge is reminded of death um, before issuing a punishment, that they tend to give out harsher punishments. So by the way, Your Honor, you're going to die one day. Yeah, and it's like, well, fuck you. You get 50 years instead of 20. You die first, bitch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think there's an element there worth talking about, but I also want to discuss, we have things like, well, the death penalty goes away. Um, and then what does life in prison mean? Because the prison would crumble around you before your se- your sentence was done. Well, you killed another one. Of course. Um what is crime at that point? Because we no longer have the crime of murder. Um, you know, no victim, no crime becomes a very interesting. Topic. You know what they yeah. do? What they do? They don't. They, they don't even build prisons anymore. They put you in a rocket and they launch you up, out into space and they go by. Yeah, and I send you into a black but hole. But yeah. you have all of eternity to come back. You have all of eternity to float around black out hole. in space. Yeah. But but okay, you talk about life imprisonment with an eternal life. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that becomes a a very difficult concept for society to accept because statistically you will hit all states. And at one point you will commit a crime that's worth life imprisonment. So we would all be in prison for life at some point. We would all be launched into space. Yeah. 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 The could, last person would have to eventually lodge himself, and then, then we'd we all... Could, we could all just float around in space and have a big old party. Yeah. Yeah. So then, um, does every sentence then have to have some sort of maximum time frame on it? Because uh, yeah. there's the other thing of, like... I think Mike's going to argue with me here. But people I change over time. That. People change over... Yeah, sure they do. Uh, okay, fine. Good. Nice. He's so, arguing with the fact that you're, he's going to yes. argue with you. See. Yeah, I said he was going to disagree with me. No, no, people do I'm change. Kidding. Then they yeah. become bigger assholes. <laughs> oh, no, there it is. See? Okay. <laughs> so, but people change over time. And I think that um, that you can make the argument that someone 200 years, you 200 years ago who um, burned down your neighbor's house is not the same person that you are today. That was Tuesday. I said 200 years ago. Yeah, I, you know, and I'm correcting you. I burned my neighbor's house down Tuesday. I'm oh. frequently not sure I'm the same person I was Tuesday. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, Tuesday is a big day. Yeah. Always. Um, well, and I guess if we look at the um, the Eastern idea of the... Buddhist. I, yeah, uh, the Buddhist idea. And I don't remember what they called it exactly. I don't either. You uh, want to describe uh, it or what? I can? Where... Um, you are never the same person as you were in the past. You're not you're, a you're not a coherent person. You're a collection of moments and yeah, yeah it who comes you, under dharma and karma. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And who you were in one moment doesn't yeah. necessarily represent yeah. who you are yeah. in another. I th- I think that's what we would have to adopt. Yeah, I, I already adopted. So yeah, uh, but uh, uh, largely, yeah, I, I, largely. I, I, I would I'll tell you where I'll agree with you. I will agree that uh, that 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 people would be forced to change over time, mm-hmm. uh, and and with a larger scope of time, the change will be bigger. Right. I, in our in our current current system of you know eighty years or so, people change, but they don't change significantly. Right. Over thousands of years, I think that becomes much larger. Mm-hmm. I do think crime and punishment would have to be largely this you know kind of the same time periods of of a. You know, it's it based it on a standard lifetime. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, a standard lifetime w- 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 was eighty years for people. That's going to be what, we, what we're going to do, or a hundred well, years, well, or whatever. Let's look at laws but of morality because you, because that gives you a lifetime to change. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, but but I want to ask this, and I think this is going into exactly where you were going with okay. that. Uh, we all believe in this principle. I think uh, I know I, I do strongly. Of no victim, no crime. Yeah. 
what does it mean to be victimized as a mortal being, which then impacts what does it mean to commit a crime? Well, if they steal yes. from you, whether you're immortal or not, you're still getting stolen from. Well, yeah. okay. That's, we, we can argue that. But, but when we talk about how, theft... How can we argue that? When we talk, well, I, I'll we, tell we, you how we, we can we, argue it. Yeah. Uh, when we talk about theft, there, there are degrees that we talk about. For instance, when you take a pen out of the jar... At, at, you know, you're, you're writing your name and you put it in your pocket and you take it. We, we know that, yes, technically that's theft, but we don't consider it a crime. You took a yeah. pen. Does any amount of wealth not just become a pen in a jar at that point? No, I don't think it does. I, th- I, I think the principle is still the same. Um, but, but, but I would argue the principle was the same when you stole the pen from the, from, from the bank or whatever. Yeah. Uh, theft is theft. Yeah, you would argue that uh, reparations to the same degree would be yeah, yeah, owed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You stole a pen, you owe a pen. You stole $1,000, you owe $1,000. Yeah. So um, I want to kind of look at morality laws because a lot of the arguments made for putting those laws into place is that people hurt themselves when they do it. But yeah. the inherent idea even if it's not spoken behind that is they could hurt themselves to the point of dying um do morality laws go away because you can do all the heroin <laughs> sure you want so. in the does, world does does immortality mean you can't be hurt can you can, can you spend what does can, it can, mean to be can, hurt can you spend uh, can you spend in, your your entire life immortal life uh as a vegetable because you were in a car wreck or tortured well yeah yeah, yeah. i mean uh if if immortal means I'm going to be immortal and healthy forever, yeah. then I think you know drunk driving laws go away. Everything goes away. Yeah, uh, because you can't be hurt. Yeah, but if you know if you could still maim somebody and they're going to spend an immortal life as a vegetable, well, that's a different situation. Well, yeah, but do people? Well, and I guess this you're is you're going to be maimed eventually. Yeah, you're going to well, be maimed eventually. Problem. But um, I I think that goes back to yours and my disagreement on whether or not innovation would continue. Because my argument would be that, yeah, you I don't think you would be a vegetable for all of eternity because somebody who enjoyed spending time with you would dedicate time toward making you not a vegetable anymore. If there, if there is a way, yeah. 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 Um, and, but that's and, assuming there's, there's, there's a cure for everything. Yeah, that is. Um, if you spend an eternity as a vegetable, were you really immortal? Was it you that was immortal? Yeah. Or that, are you... Fuck, that's well, also a question. What if, you're, what if you're alert? I mean, you, you're, you're alert, you know everything's going around, but you're, you're, quadriplegic. you're a paraplegic. Or yeah. Quadriplegic. yeah, what was... Yeah, uh, su- yeah Superman. Uh, uh, quadriplegic. Yeah, what, what was his name, though? Christopher Reeve. Yeah, you're Christopher Reeves, you know. Yeah. yeah. Or you're... Uh, um, who's the one that died recently? The scientist. Um, oh, God. Why, did, why do we not know his name now? Um, Stephen Hawking just Hawking. died. Hawking. Yeah. Wait, what? You didn't died. know Stephen yeah, Hawking's dead? Ago, when yeah. did Stephen Hawking die? Yeah, about two weeks ago. Yeah, about that. Shit. Sad day, sad day. Um, he, he he actually released a, a very influential paper just for his death about uh, multiverse theory. Um, oh. It's being questioned somewhat, but but it, it does give some interesting insight into. Some hey, if things. anybody was going to be immortal, it was it, 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 Stephen Hawking would have figured it Maybe out. Maybe in another universe. Uh, yeah, March fourteenth. Yeah. yeah, March fourteenth. Okay, I knew it wasn't very long ago. March fourteenth. <coughs> yeah. Holy fuck! But um, how did I miss that? I saw it. You're a student. Anyway, I thought I yeah. told you. I don't know. <laughs> she doesn't listen to you. That's um, also that's true. true. <laughs> so uh, you, you know, you, you you wonder about these things, and and it it's it's disturbing to me to to think about the questions of morality whenever whenever you start dealing with this, um, because again, living forever does not necessarily mean quality of life is forever, and it would suck to be immortal, yeah, and paralyzed, or immortal. What if you're immortal and you are uh, 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 mentally handicapped? What if you're immortal and you've got uh, – what if you get the clap and you're immortal? You know, I mean – That just you means get, you had a good life. You I got mean, some tough situations. Well, and, and that's where I think that innovation would be spurred just because you want to have the best eternity that you can. Does immortality mean that cancer doesn't exist? Does immortality mean that immortality AIDS doesn't exist? immortality means that cancer gets – Fixed. Well, it means you live forever, but it doesn't necessarily mean that your body stays healthy forever. In some ways, I think that it does. But no, I think that you could get the flu. Yeah. But I think we figure out how to rid you of the flu. You know, I think we figure, figure out how to rid you of AIDS. You Once figure, we figure out the flu, we'll figure out the, a- the AIDS fi- like yeah. six steps down. You figure that, that you know, over, over a period of time, over, over thousands of years, just the odds... You're going to lose an arm. You're going to lose a leg. You're probably going to put an eye out. You know, we'd be bionic is, as fuck. Stuff is going to happen. 
Well, and, and maybe that's what the immortality is, is that, you know, uh, it, it, instead of our, our bodies can't die, it's it's just, it's... Uh, what's our minds the, are there. The futurist. Yeah, we isolate. What's the futurist's name? I've, I've forgotten his name now. But he, he's predicted yeah. eternal life, not mm-hmm. be, not through, we're going to live forever. He says that it's going to happen in the next generation because yeah. we're going to be able to upload our entire yeah, we'll be able to isolate our into, consciousness into, into something into else. The singularity. Yeah. The singul- he he invented yeah. a piano, actually. Yeah. That was. Uh, uh, why can I not think of his name now? Anyway. I, I can't either. No, that's not his name. But, anyway, uh, it, it, but you know, maybe that's what immortality is. It's not that your physical being lives; it's that you know your essence continues to live forever and ever, yeah. which Look, would be pretty cool. Yeah, uh, a, a couple things uh, that that you know, weren't addressed uh, in, in the outline, I'll mm-hmm. say, that I'd like to get to. One thing, I've heard an argument that uh, is is set up as a proof that not only is immortality bad, but that we live too long. Yeah. And it's that if you look at how much time humans waste, it goes to show that some level of lack of urgency on our own part and the wasted time that we have is in itself evidence that not only do we uh, uh, not need to live forever, that we live too long. What, do you, what are your thoughts on that? Do we live too long already? No, I don't think we do. Uh, but but, but, I, but I've heard that argument before. Again, the, the idea that, that we just, uh, the, the, our life has, has extended so much that we're not, we're not using it uh, adequately. Yeah. Um, go ahead. I, I would question this person's um, argument for what it means to waste time. Um, on the simple idea that, um, my argument was actually going to be, we live a, a relatively, a fixed ish, uh, period of time. And so just don't waste so much of it. But then I, it occurred to me that those people are doing things that they find value in. Yeah. Ray Kurzweil. Um, Okay. Yeah, Ray Kurzweil. Yeah. Um, but they're doing things that they find value in, and what it is is that he doesn't see value in what it is that they're doing. Well, and and you kind of hit the nail on the head for my argument. It's w- whenever you know you dig a little deeper into what he's talking about, he's saying you know we're watching TV or we're doing this. But you know what? I care nothing for watching TV. In fact, anyone who knows Can't me, either. look around my house. I don't own one, and, and I've turned down offers on free ones. I don't so want many. one. Yeah, actually, if you ever want to make a we lot of money, we could have started a job, uh, like a business, taking free TVs and selling them for yeah. cheap. Yeah, if you ever want to make a lot of money, tell people you don't own a TV and pawn them whatever they give you. Yeah. Um, but anyway, but but I consider that a waste of time. But how am I to look somebody else and say you're wasting this this time you have any more than I am to say you have money and you spend it on a pint of ice cream and you've wasted your money? Yeah. Just because it wasn't what I would have done with the money doesn't make it inherently wasteful. Yeah. So yeah, I, I largely you know rebut his argument the same way you do. The other question I have is I think I think there's been a general consensus on here that at the very least the question of immortality being good isn't clear and maybe so far as it's not good, right? Um, so what is the appropriate amount of time to live? Like, what would you say, okay, it's not immortality, it's not, you know, whatever we live now, or maybe whatever we live now is perfect. What is the amount of time? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't want to limit anybody's life, and I think that I think medicine should be trying to, to extend quality of life. Yeah. Uh, I do think that, that our medicine should be looking at quality of life more than quantity of life. Yeah. I think our uh, philosophy should be. Yeah, but but but, but I do think I do think that, that the last you know the last hundred years has been much more interested in quantity than quality. Yeah. Um, so I, I actually want to jump back to Kurzweil's idea because while I I think he's expressing it incorrectly or, or maybe trying to make the wrong argument here, um, I I think the thing that can be that. I think the place where value can be found and what it is that he's saying is people who do not feel like they are being as productive as they should be in their lives. Those are the people who do not feel like their time is being spent valuably. Um, and there was, there was actually a friend of mine who um, I, I made a thing and, um, and I make a lot of things and <laughs> <laughs> this is riveting. Yeah. It, it's not relevant what the thing was. But I made a thing. I make a lot Sex of things. Toy. And <laughs> this is going to go downhill fast. <laughs> and, 
And so um, it was a thing that I didn't have to do, but I wanted to do, and I just kind of put it together, put it out there. And the thing that he asked me was, how is it that you always find the time to oh, do one extra okay. thing? Do do one more thing that you don't have to do. How it is that, that how is it that you find that time? And and you don't sleep. The, no, I do sleep. I actually ask John. I'm a sleeper. I love sleep. I love naps. I love long nap. I love uh, night nap. I love all the naps. I like when she sleeps. That's why I put her sleep every night. I just, yeah. um, I don't sleep. But anyway, uh, so the thing that I told him was it's it's in the moments in between, and I'm not as good at that as I want to be. But that's what it is. It is, um, and I think that's the thing here that Kurzweil should be hitting on is you can be far more productive if you take the things where you don't see that you are doing something valuable and take that out and insert into it a thing that you do see value in. Yeah, and, and actually, this actually happened fairly recently. Yeah. I know what she's referring to. And I think one point that is absolutely relevant to this conversation was totally a sex toy. It was yeah. absolutely, oh. absolutely <laughs> a sex toy, yeah. Yes, take out the thing that's wasting time. Yes. Yes. By the way, they, the they, are available, yeah. they are available uh, for purchase on our website. Um, are, are they? Are they? No. Okay. Uh, you're well, you're just, available for purchase. Just, so I, I, mean, I am. I am. Yeah. I am. Uh, uh, yes. What the, is it? $500 a month? The, the, sex, 5, the sex toy actually had a Kickstart on it, and it was, uh, it was, it was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, 10cc engine. It was, it, yeah. was, it was all set. On the note of sex toys. We've covered everything I had in mind yeah, to cover. Yeah. Is there anything else you guys have? No, I have my, my two points that weren't on the, the agenda. Very cool. i gotta, uh, I got to be honest. I was a little nervous about this topic, and it was interesting. It's I, been fun. I'm, uh, it went longer than I thought it would. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Our shows always tend to go yeah, a little they long. Do. Yeah, especially these I listened to one days. the other day that was two and a half hours long. <laughs> That's that a we long did. time. Yeah, it was a long one. Well, anyway, um, on this topic, I'm sure that we missed some things. So I'm putting it on you guys. Let us know. Was there a question that we didn't consider? Yeah, was yeah. there a question we considered incorrectly, in your opinion? Let us know. You can do that by hitting us up on our YouTube, um, on uh, social media, on our website, by email. At contact us at sixpackphilosophy.com. We want to hear from you guys. Um, we hope that you've enjoyed the show. I guess that John has so some good. things to say, so I was I'm gonna not going to wrap us up just yet. I was going to say, if uh, if well, there's actually two things. If if you do want to contact us, a really easy way to do that and contextualize it to the show you want to contact us about is sign up for our newsletter at sixpackphilosophy.com. Uh, you'll get a little pop-up. You can sign up for our newsletter. And after you're done signing up for our newsletter, you'll get a newsletter on Fridays about the previous show. It's got show notes and some additional links, our beer ratings. Uh, so you can kind of hit the pieces you wanted to hit. But... If you hit reply to that email, we get it. Yeah. So you can yeah. not only respond uh, uh, to us or contact us, but you can do it directly about the show you want to talk yeah, about right. uh, in context. So, And if there's yeah, a show yeah. you want to hear, go ahead and let us know. We'll, uh, we'll be glad to uh, you know yeah. put it in the hopper and see what happens. Yeah. So nope. uh, before we go... Oh, are you, are you going to do the thing? Do the thing. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. Wow. Sorry. Our producer decided it was time for us to go already. Yep. Man. <laughs> Sorry, he, I was testing something. He, that was, a, that was a good song, wasn't it, guys? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, before we well, go. We started with a spilled beer. We might as well finish with an off key. You but, know what? I feel like the discussion has been really well, but technically we've had some fucking issues. <laughs> By the way, I want to say for anyone who's really confused right now, if you're listening to this on the podcast, we actually record on two different apps. So everybody who's watching live on YouTube just heard our outro start. The people who are listening to the podcast are not going to hear yeah. that. It's just going to yeah, be yeah, like, yeah, yeah. we started talking crazy all of a sudden. <laughs> yes. Uh, so. Not that that would be the yeah. first time um so did you want to do the recommendation i can do it go, no you go ahead I so um the podcast recommendation for this week is going to be myths and legends by jason weiser 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 yep. yes um uh really kind of goes into all sorts of mythological stories and legends yeah, yeah. puts it in a um, modern context of yeah framing. puts it in a modern context this this comes from our producer yes. who uh who, who who picked this week's uh th we, this week's choice we were sitting here five minutes before the show was supposed to start live streaming and going oh shit we don't have a recommendation he, he was, was like, like no i got, I got it. it i got, got it. it i got yeah. it yeah and amazingly in the it's clinch. like also applicable to the yeah, the, yeah. the subject so very cool Super thank you so producer. much alex um with that and nothing more. Thank uh, you, guys. How can they support the show? 
Yes, they can go to patreon.com slash sixpackphilosophy and sign up to get additional perks such as live streams of the show, hard shots. There's a really interesting one we're going to be trying getting soon with an interview with a polygamist to kind of piggyback on on our monogamy versus polygamy one. Mm -hmm. Uh, And if you don't like extra content, which I don't know what what you're up to. What's wrong with you? uh, You can get some merch at teespring.com slash stores slash sixpackphilosophy. This shirt's available. That shirt's available. This Uh, one's available. That's okay. <laughs> that print's available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff. So, anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We hope you've had fun. I know we have. We'll see you next week. Cheers. 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 That's a good sound. Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. 